Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, we'll explain the progress of the iPod project. So this project has been anything but easy. It's been very time consuming and it has been very annoying, to say the least, whenever I have been working on it. I did actually do quite a bit of work over the summer, but that didn't exactly really work out. I didn't get much done because it's just been a huge pain to work on this device. So first of all, let me go grab the iPod Touch. It's sitting over here. Got it right here. I still have seven installed on it with a few more patches than last time. I've got a few more settings patches that were fixed and a few other things. One of my friends actually, when I was talking about the project, suggested that I credit myself in like a setting pain or something like in the about thing. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that, but kind of a funny idea anyways. Anyways, side tangent. But I do have the iPod Touch here and it does work on 7, but it does not work perfectly. And basically it's the same way as it was when I left off in part 2. That's why I actually never really made a part 3 until around now. Yeah, the reason why I have not been working so much on this project anymore is because it's a pain. I did work on it over the summer, didn't really get much done. So here's what I'm going to do to explain how this project actually goes for me. I don't think a lot of people really know the behind the scenes. So first of all, you gotta go onto the iPod Touch and install iOS 7, which iTunes does not like you when you try that. So I've had to use several devices to restore the device back to 7, because I actually went back to 6 for a little bit to actually use the thing. And then I was like, okay, I'm done using it for a little bit. So I popped it back on 7, which took way longer than it should have. And then what I did was I found the patches on a separate hard drive, which I've now saved to my iCloud drive so I don't lose them. And popped them back onto the iPod Touch, which I will explain how to do that in a little bit, but long story short, got most of the patches back on there, but really a lot of the patches are just visual glitches that iOS has because it's not an iPhone. So a lot of text will refer to an iPhone. I went in, fixed a lot of that, it's still not perfect, but made it say, iPod instead of iPhone or iPod Touch instead of iPhone by looking at older screenshots of how iOS was on like the fifth gen iPod Touch. Use that as a reference. That part's not the hardest, but the hardest part is actually going in and modifying stuff to make it work again. Like the flashlight toggle in the control center causes lag in the entire control center and the only way to fix that is to completely remove the toggle. Problem is, iOS 7, you couldn't you couldn't remove toggles in iOS 7. Even looking through the system files, there's no system library control center folder, which I think even in iOS 8 there was, where they were experimenting with modular control center stuff, which happened in iOS 11. But there was no such thing on 7. You couldn't modify anything, not even in the system files could you do that. It was basically baked into the springboard executable itself. So going in to modify that has not been easy, and I have tried several times. It bricks itself, so most of the time I can't edit that with like BB Edit or anything. I have to go into a hex editor to modify that. That's why exactly why I have a hex editor on this MacBook here. That's mainly a reason why I have not been working on this project so much anymore, is because it's not easy, and it's honestly to the point where I don't have the time to be able to maintain this. I don't have the time to be able to continue doing this project. I don't give up because I really do want to see this happen, but now that iOS is getting newer and newer and newer, iOS 7 on here is not going to change much for this device. Sure, it's cool, but you can't run SoundCloud on 7 anymore. You can't run YouTube on 7. YouTube Studio is totally broke. You can't use several apps actually on 7. A lot of new apps don't run on 7, and I've tried using it on my iPhone 4s. The only streaming service that I've been able to find that I use that still works on 7 is Bandcamp. And even then, that's a very limited streaming service. You still have to purchase the music that you want to continue streaming. So it's basically like just buying it and using it on the device. That's just how that is. So honestly, at this point, if I'm going to continue this project, I'm going to need some help. If you guys want to try and work on this, if you guys know how to do this, I have released the patches that I have made in the video description. If you have a new patch, send it to me. I'll test it. And then if it actually works, I'll add it to the batch of patches and credit you in it as well. So this isn't a project for me where it's like, oh, I want to be the first person to do this. I want this to be like, I want to be famous because of this. No, it's I want to see this done <laughs> because this project was started by several people years ago and was abandoned, unfortunately as well, because it left the iPod in a very sad state. I was able to figure out how to get Wi-Fi on the device without needing a dual boot, which apparently has not been done before, so that's cool. I've actually tried doing dual boot methods. It bricks it every single time I use it on this device. I've, I've tried dual boots several times to get it working, like being able to boot 6 and 7 on the same device. It works for a little bit, 
But if you reboot the device like four or five times, switching back and forth, it will break iOS 6. And I've tried fixing it. it. It's not repairable. That's not a viable method. So that's why I went and did the non-dual boot method, which works. But again, that's another side tangent. Let me go ahead and pop on the computer here and I'll explain some of the patchwork that I did and I'll explain some of the instructions as well. So let's do this. So you can see I'm now on the desktop of this MacBook. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the patches that I've actually made here. So if I open up the Finder. So first, let's explain here what's going on. So I've got the Finder open and you can see I've got the folder for the iOS on old devices project. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to resize this window here is you can see, first of all, here are the folders I've made. None of these have anything in them, the one with the red dots, because I've not actually done any work on those yet. I do plan on it, at least, because these devices should be able to run a newer version of iOS that Apple did not support, because the first gen can run iOS 4. The third gen should be able to run 6, and the iPad 1 should also be able to run 7 with an A4 processor. However, I've not been successful with any of that, so I have not actually worked on it. So here's the folder that we've actually messed with, and here is the iPod Touch 4th gens folder. I've not made a modified IPSW file, at least not one that works. I have tried. iTunes does not accept it, even though you should theoretically be able to with Poem DFU mode. So if I go into the patches here, you can see we've got quite a bit in here. And you can see I've actually made a readme file because I am planning on releasing these patches. So you guys can actually take a look in the description. You will see I have them down there, and you can modify the files yourself. I am planning on making a tutorial once more stuff is finished on how to do this but if you want me to make a tutorial sooner let me know in the comments below and I can make a tutorial with everything that I've got here and the fans on this thing are going crazy which makes sense okay so you can see here are the patches and it's mainly just some string text here you can see this is the strings file uh, and this computer does not know how to like or quick look does not know how to read this so I'll just open up BB edit or something like that if I open up here you can see here are the settings panes I've actually changed a decent bit in here and I did actually make some more patches over this summer. So what I'm going to do here is you can see here are all the strings here and just mainly, they're mainly text fixes because there's not much that I've been able to do. However, there is a Wi-Fi patch here. I did not make this. I think I actually put that in the readme file and I'll check that later. And if I didn't, then I'll put it in there. You can see here, here is the springboard text. And just to prove just some things that I've changed, we're gonna go to settings. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, you know what? It's probably just settings. You know what? It is settings. So right here, you can see here is the patches that you need. And actually, there were actually some more entries in here that I had deleted because they're unnecessary on an iPod Touch. Like there was a cellular entry. You can see this entire section right here. So like airport settings, all this, all this Wi-Fi stuff right here. This is all an array that contains the information that displays to show the preference pane. It's the little thing that appears in like for each entry. You have Bluetooth, you have Wi-Fi, you have all that. All that should show up and this does not right now because it does not detect Bluetooth. However, it will show up once Bluetooth is fixed, if it is. And another thing as well, is that there was a cellular pane in here and there was a compass pane in here, which I have removed. So that means that you won't see that on the iPod Touch, which you shouldn't be able to anyways, because it's not, those aren't not supported features on any iPod Touch. So yeah, those are the patches really. And like I said, I will be releasing these. There is a link in the video description if you want to hold on to some of these for now at least. But what you're gonna wanna do with these is just read the readme file. You're gonna wanna complete a tutorial on how to get iOS 7 running on your iPod Touch. There are several of them out there that you can use. I referred to, I'm trying to remember which one I referred to, but I'll put a link in the video description with the one that I referred to. So I'm just going to explain a few of the prerequisites here. You must be using a device that is running OS 10 Yosemite or older. I have tried using anything newer than that, like El Cap I've tried. I've tried High Sierra, I've tried Mojave, Kalina. That does not work. For some reason, I don't know why, but those don't work. I have not tried with SIP disabled. I could try that, but to play it safe, use Yosemite or older. That's what works for me. Once you actually verify the OS that you have installed, that hopefully you have Yosemite or older, you're going to want to open up the file that is next to the readme. You'll see the SSH file. You're going to want to open this and plug in your iPod Touch. Make sure it's in DFU mode. Obviously, I think it says it right here. Yes, it does. So the tool is actually going to give you some instructions saying, hey, put it into DFU mode or hey, check this, do this. It really doesn't say very much. What you're going to want to do is use a tool like CyberDuck to SSH into your device because this tool, what this tool does right here, as it says in the name, it allows you to gain root access into your iPod Touch using Secure Shell 
which is just over the cable that you have plugged in. But you're gonna need a tool to be able to utilize that. I use CyberDuck, it's actually open down here for some reason, I'm gonna quit this. I use CyberDuck, works perfectly fine, so. And then, then you type in this command right here, and then you mount the disks, which it, you'll see this output, and then you can actually start patching your device. Now these, like I said, are all the patches that kind of exist right now. There isn't Bluetooth, there isn't any sound, there's none of that, and it's very unfortunate too, because it would've been really cool to see more patches come out, and I've done my fair share of fixes on this thing. I've done a lot, I've tried to add Bluetooth back, I've tried to do all this and that, and I have not been successful, and it's unfortunate because I can't figure that out, and there's also a few other visual glitches that actually cause problems. So I'm gonna go to the camera, explain some more stuff, and then we'll probably wrap up the video here. So now that I'm back on camera here, I'm just gonna explain a few more things before this video ends. And that is, I wanna see this done. I know I mentioned this before I actually hopped onto here, but I want to see this done. That's the entire intention of me, not because I wanna be famous because of it, not because I want to be recognized because of it, but it's because I just wanna see this done. I hopped in here not knowing what I was getting into, being completely honest. And it's unfortunate that it's that difficult to fix this kind of stuff, but it's just kind of what happens. I'm not smart enough as like, Ralph 0045 who figured this out how to who figured out how to do this first. I'm not that person, I'm just someone else on the internet who thinks that they can dabble their toes into it and ultimately pretty much fell flat on my face. So I'll continue working on it. Maybe if you guys are interested, I could do live streams of this kind of stuff, which I don't know, I think that'd be cool. But for now, I'm going to need more help to be able to get this project finished. I'm not gonna be able to do it by myself. I've actually, I think, had a few comments from people saying I should make a Discord server with this kind of stuff, especially because I'm on Discord a lot. <laughs> I don't actually really want to do that just because of my personal schedule. I've got a lot of school, I've got YouTube obviously to maintain, and I've got just some other things that I've gotta do, and I just don't wanna bear the responsibility of hosting a Discord server and moderating it, even though I'll have friends that said that they'd help me do it. I'm like, I'm just not gonna do it right now. When I get more free time, maybe later down the road in my YouTube career, maybe I'll do it, but right now I, I'm just not going to. So I'm very interested to see what your thoughts are on this project, and like I said, if you have a contribution to make, what you can do, just DM me on Discord the files or whatnot, and I'll make sure to give you credit when I ultimately publish more patches. And yes, if the patch actually does work that you made, I will throw it into the patches folder. I'll update that and make sure that's in there. I'll give you credit as well if you have a name or a YouTube channel name or anything that you want to go by. I'll throw that in there as well. Just want to make sure that we can get this done. So that's pretty much it for this video. So I'm excited to see what you guys can make with this. I don't know if this will ever finish or I have, a, I'm hoping it does, but I'm just excited to see what you guys have to do with this. If you have experience, don't feel obligated to do this. Obviously, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to do yourself any favors by forcing yourself to work on something that you don't know what you're doing with because you're just going to get frustrated that you're not making any progress and ultimately probably break your device in the process. So if you want to see a live stream of me potentially working on this when I have free time, let me know in the comments below. I'd totally be down for doing that. Although it probably wouldn't be very often to be totally fair, but still be something I'd be up for doing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, hit the like button and click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this in the future. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and good luck out there for the people who are going to be working on this project. See you guys.